All right, gentlemen, welcome to the annual He-Man's Woman Haters Club. Today's agenda, we're going to be talking about whether or not Doug Peterson abandoned the run in the second half of the Dallas Cowboys game. All right, y'all. Gentlemen, let's get started. Ladies, you can participate, too. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching this. Once again, guys, my name is Stephen Heider, and this is Gate City Sports Channel. All right, ladies and gents, sorry, guys. So, let me explain to you why I'm even doing this video. I go to PhiladelphiaEagles.com. I'm just trying to see what they're reporting, you know, what, what was being said. And I see an article from Fran Duffy. If you guys don't know Fran Duffy, you know, he's a contributor on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. He's a journalist. Uh, he's a guy that I, I genuinely I respect, Fran Duffy. I don't want this to come out as this, like there's some kind of disrespect towards Fran Duffy. There's not. But Fran, I got to be honest with you, if this ever gets back to you. You show that you're towing a company line here. Because your article was nonsense. The basis behind Fran Duffy's article was is that Doug Peter that the fan base is overreacting and Doug Peterson did not abandon the run. I'm not saying that Fran didn't make a few really good points in his article, which was some circumstance knocked us out of being able to run the ball. And that's absolutely correct. False starts and not getting set on the line. A bunch of stupid stuff knocked us out of opportunities to run the ball. We even had one play where it was a run called where Miles Sanders broke free. Would have put us pretty, pretty much looked like pretty close to a first and goal situation. They got called back because of a really bad Matt Pryor hole. I'm off the plate, my slate. There you go, second and ten. <laughs> and Sanders for a first down, two flat. Another point Fran Duffy brought up, which is, you know, the overall thesis of this being is really evaluating Doug Peterson, let's make no mistake, is that Doug did design a lot of things that Hurts absolutely missed. Hertz missed a lot of opportunities in this game, man. Hertz was really bad in this game. When you guys see the film, and I'll show you this stuff later this week, you'll see it. Hertz was really bad. He looked like a rookie quarterback 100% in this game. With that said, Fran, let's just do some simple numbers here. I counted 37 plays in the second half. 37 plays, okay? I took out all the, from, from what I can tell, and go double check me, guys, but from what I can tell, I took out every single one of the penalties, and obviously I didn't count stupid stuff like punts, okay? 37 total offensive plays in the second half. Of those 37, now I will say, I, I would be willing to go eight, because even though that play got called back, there was the intention to run there, but you can't total that, because then you have to go eight out of 38, not seven out of 37, but there were seven plays that were running plays. Two of those plays over scramble drills, so even this is misleading, okay? Seven out of 37, guys, is 18.9%. Our run-to-pass ratio in the second half of this game was 19% run, 81% pass. France. Mr. Duffy, I'm going to have to use the words of the great Philly Fresh here. Fran, I'm going to need you to step into my office because you're fired. All right, y'all. Let's get it. We're going to run some film. All right, ladies and gents, just to be clear, I'm joking. I'm not actually calling for Fran Duffy to be fired. I actually enjoy Fran Duffy's work. I think he's really good at what he does. It's just being comical about it because I know that he was full of crap in this instance. Um, everyone is at times. I'm not hating on Fran Duffy, guys. I actually really do truly appreciate and actually respect the work that Fran Duffy does. Uh, with that said, I think that what ends up happening here, and I'm going to show you guys throughout this little segment, is that it's one of those situations where you're trying to make a valid point, but I think the way that you wear things get away from you. And it really, it, it ties you into this nonsense that you can't defend. Like, 
Look, I absolutely agree that circumstance limited some of the opportunities that we had to run the ball. Like, there's just no denying that if you watch the film. Check it out at 13. And this play is low down. Rejoicing out seeing that score. Eagles fans as well. But at the same time, 81 to 19 percent pass to run, or 19 to 81 percent run to pass. If you want to look at that, basically 80 to 20. That's really hard to defend, friend. That's that's pass happy. That's the very definition of being pass happy. And you know, to start our film segment off, I'm going to show you one example, guys, of a passing play where we just came off of really big completion. I believe it was to Quez Watkins, and. Here we are in a, in a perfect situation to take pressure off the quarterback to, to slow down a pass rush by running the ball. And what do we do? Under eight remaining of the third quarter. Eagles trailing by 13. From the Cowboys 32 off the fake to Sanders. Hurts him. Doug gets pass happy. I don't know how else to say that. Doug gets pass happy in this instance. Like, there is no reason why you can't run the ball in that situation, okay? You can hear the announcer spouting some bull crap. You're only down two scores midway through the third quarter. You can still run the ball. I have no clue what they're talking about. It, it's, it's a weird element of disparity that Doug gets himself into to where he goes into this weird desperation mode and completely will abandon the run for really long periods of the game that make no sense, especially... Giving circumstance, which sometimes these commentators forget. You got a rookie quarterback who does not have a lot of experience in his college career throwing more than 35 attempts in a game. As a matter of fact, I think I only counted maybe two or three times uh, from his time at Oklahoma, which was by far his most efficient, you know, time as a passer, where he threw more than 35 attempts. So, I mean, I, you, you've got to use context here. You've got to do things to help a young quarterback out. I, I didn't... I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Some of the things I didn't see besides abandoning the run. I didn't see a lot of easy first reads for Jalen Hurts. We put him through a lot of, you know, difficult situations where he's got to go through two, three reprogressions as a rookie quarterback who doesn't even have a lot of experience in college doing this. And then we're expecting a great outcome. I mean, the kid has played above expectations for two games. I mean, he surprised the crap out of me. But, I mean, we had to know that this reality was going to come crashing back down the more you keep doing this to him. Like... This is frustrating because, to me, this is a clear instance where we could have run the ball to have controlled the clock here. Also, to set Jalen Hurts up for a much better down and distance, you still can put points on the board. You can say, well, 30 to 20 is not going to make that big a difference. Well, it did when we got the ball like a dozen times in the red zone in the second half and couldn't do crap with it. Would have made these drives a lot easier if we had put up six points through two field goals. Then you're only really searching for one score, right? It just... I, I'm bothered by the selection and the awareness of where you are in the game, okay? And then to furthermore, to get into this play, I'll just I'll flip this around and I'll give you guys the coach's view of this. Why are we running, like, number one, like, why is Djax out there playing the boundary side? Why is Alshon playing the flanker role? Like, what are you trying to fool? What, what kind of wrinkle are you trying to add here, Doug? It's foolishness, okay? And why are we running so many hooks and comebacks and stuff like that? Like, come on, man. Like, ugh, I'm frustrated. Concluding thoughts here, look, while I absolutely understand what Fran Duffy was trying to say, and he has valid points, guys, he does, I, I think it's a little towing the company line to say that Doug Peterson didn't get pass happy in the second half of this football game. He absolutely did. Anytime that your run to pass, you know, your pass to run ratio is, you know, greater than 80 to 20, I, I don't know how else you can define that, man. I mean, that's clearly pass happy. I think the argument lies more into the subtleties of were the things Doug scheming getting open. And there were some occasions where Hertz missed a read. The offensive line didn't hold, to be quite honest. In this play here, Hertz saw the read. He would have made that pass. Malata got, Malata got beat. Malata got beat bad. Malata had a really bad second half, by the way. But it's a tough situation here, guys, because what we're doing here is that we're evaluating the coach. Let's make no mistake. 
Uh, I felt like that article, the underlying message here, the underlying principle he was trying to get to was, can you defend Doug Peterson's play calling? Is Doug Peterson the problem here? That's what it felt like to me, is if it's an, an effort to potentially try to skew the view of Doug Peterson. And I do agree that Doug can scheme things. It's not, it's not that Doug lacks the scheme. It's the situational stuff with Doug. Like this play here, yeah. I mean, you could see the wheel route was coming open if there was time. But you know what stops that? You know what makes it easier down the distance? You know what maybe slows down a pass rush? When you get a first down on your opponent's side of the field and maybe you run the ball. I mean, you can't deny that. Like, then we can look at other instances where there are other instances in the game where you got short yard, you know, conversion down in distances where, you know, obviously there was the one play on a, I think it was a third or a fourth and one where we did run the ball and we converted, but. Third down and run. Got it. First down by. You know, there were other plays where we had that same opportunity and we didn't do it. We chose not to run the ball because now the score compiled up and now we're forced into these weird throwing things so game management perhaps the best way to judge this guys is just to look at the seven offensive drives in the second quarter, or second half of this game, not second quarter, but second half of the game, third and fourth quarter, okay? And the 16 first down plays that resulted from that second half of the game, third and fourth quarter, right? 16 total plays, 13 passes, three runs was the ratio. I mean, look, it's hard to judge this just because on, on some instances you can say like, wow, I mean, we spread the ball around, I mean, from... Quez Watkins to Travis Fogum to Ertz to Alshon getting a pass interference call uh, to Miles Sanders getting a couple of quick little dump off passes. Like, I mean, the ball really got moved around. We did have some luck with, you know, we got Alshon had a major pass interference call to set us up for, you know, a first down inside of Dallas's territory. I mean, we hit Quez Watkins on a 14 yarder. I mean, there were some big plays that came out of this pass happiness that came. But I think what can't be you know, ignored here is, is that we start off the first drive with a three and out, but we ran the ball twice, set up a really good third and short, then Hurts missed a read. Got a little too, you know, got a little too happy in the pocket and, and, and left the pocket too soon. Second drive, we got two first down opportunities. Both of those are passes. The second pass results in a sack fumble that ends up being like a 13 yard loss that just completely destroys the momentum of that drive. The third drive, you got one really nice first down completion on that drive, and then you got it followed up by another incompletion. Fourth drive ends with an incompletion where you have a first down there. Fifth drive is probably the longest drive of the second half of the football game. It was the best-looking drive we had, but it ended with an INT. And it should be noted that we had one, two, three, four, five first downs in that drive. Four out of the five were passes. Sixth drive... You know, that's the per, uh, the pass interference for Alshon. We did get a run in that drive with Boston Scott where he hit like a, uh, I'm sorry, no, no. The sixth drive is when we had the scramble from Hurts that resulted in a fumble. So two consecutive possessions that end in turnovers. We all know that that Hurts fumble is probably really not a fumble. That looked like clearly the knee was down to me too, but you can't re-legislate what happened in the seventh you know, series of the game also results in a fumble, or I'm sorry, an INT, a turnover. So three straight possessions to end the game. Turnovers. Three first downs, three passes on each of those. 14-yarder to Watkins, 8-yarder to Fulgham, then incomplete to Ertz. I, it's a mixed ratio here, guys, of success and failure. I still stand by my guns that when you're at an 80 to 20% pass to run ratio, that's entirely too pass happy. There are periods of the game to where I do think like things like the zone read got taken away from utilization from Doug in the second half just because of down in distances. Now, early in the third quarter, we could have done some zone read and we chose not to. Like the first, you know, third down sequence, we were well within <clears throat> the territory to do a zone read there on that third down on the first drive of the, of the you know second half of the game. We could have, but for the most part, zone reads were being limited by stupid penalties and you know, Doug getting sacked, you know, calling stupid passing plays, getting pass happy to get you sacked. 
and get you knocked back too far to, to actually complete those type of plays. It's a big issue, guys. Um, let me know what you think here. I think he got too pass happy, personally. I think he got too pass happy, but I also think that it's a very nuanced thing, right? It's not just as simple as, you know, there were some mitigating circumstances that resulted in some of the pass happiness, but it's just hard for me to defend an 80% pass rate. All right, y'all, let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate y'all tuning in, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. We're going to probably be talking some salary cap tomorrow, guys.